Sarah Steiner. I'm the Director of Connections, and I just want to say welcome. We're so excited that you're here on this absolutely beautiful Palm Sunday. We're so grateful to have each of you with us today. Um, we would love to get to know those of you who are here with us in the seats um, sitting in front of you. There should be a Connect card. It looks something like this. We would love for you to fill that out and um, put it in the offering plate as it's passed. If there's not one there, you can always scan the QR code on the back of your bulletin. There's a button that says Connect Card. Whichever option is easiest for you, we would just love to get to know those of you who are here with us. If it is your first Sunday with us, um, I would love to get to know you. Um, we would love to make a donation to a charity of your choice. All you have to do is fill out a Connect Card and uh, we'll make that donation in your name um, for your honor. And I would also love to meet you and get to know you. I'm, I will be in the narthex after service. I'd love to put a, a gift in your hands just for being with us for your first time. And so we just wanna say welcome. There I am, um, I'm celebrating Palm Sunday today. I've decided that that donkey's name is Steve. He's very cute and I like him a lot. So me and Steve are having a great time this morning uh, on Palm Sunday. So welcome, we're so glad to have you here with us. In just a few minutes, you'll see our uh, kids and preschoolers uh, parading around here waving palm branches and it's gonna be really, really cute and I hope you uh, get enjoy, uh, you join with them in waving your palm branches in just a moment and uh, if you feel like getting up and walking around with them, you may absolutely do that as well. So. Uh, but the, we have kids in nursery going on this morning as well. And we just want to say welcome. We are so glad you're here with us. Um, we have lots of things to celebrate. I sound like this. I'm very sorry I sound like this. I know this is probably distracting. But I sound like this because I was outside all day yesterday with Easter Festival. And there was a lot of pollen outside. And it got to me. So, But we had an absolutely fantastic time yesterday um, at Lawrenceville Elementary School. We had over 1,700 people, we believe, were there at some point, and so we gave away like 1,500 hot dogs, 800 goodie bags. Um, we had um, all of our Easter books were given out to each family, and so really it was just a fantastic time. Um, we believe that we had over 100 volunteers, and truly, truly, we cannot thank each and every one of you enough if you were there for all the work that you put into making that possible. It, it was a fantastic event. Uh, this is my third year doing it, and I said that this was our best year yet. And so everything just went super smooth. I kind of felt useless there for a while because I had two stations I was monitoring, and I kept going back and forth. And every time I check in on them, they're like, oh, we're fine. No worries. We're doing great. And I was like, okay, well, let me go check on these guys. Oh, no worries. We're fine. Doing great. And so I was like, well, I'm here if something goes wrong. And, of course, nothing ever went wrong. And so it really was just absolutely wonderful day um, that we got to just share the love of Jesus with um, a lot of our friends in the Lawrenceville community. So thank you all so much for showing up and helping out. We could not have done it without you. Um, speaking of Easter, we have lots of things happening this week um, as we come into Holy Week starting today. So um, this Thursday, we'll have our Maundy Thursday service. It's a very, very special service, one of my favorite of the year. It's going to be taking place right here in this room on Thursday at 7. Um, we will do communion at the end of that service as well, so please make uh, plans to come. really is just a great time to get our mind uh, ready for uh, the weekend, the Easter weekend. And so we would love to have each of you here for that service. And then on Sunday, we have four services to choose from. We'd love for you to go four for four if you're feeling up to it. Um, we have a sunrise service at 7 at the campground. Um, that's 700 Brazelton Highway. That's such a great service. i uh, love to have you for that one. We have 8.30 here in this room. That's a communion service. 9.30 in our family center, which is our modern service. And then 11 a.m. back in here in this room for our traditional service. So we would love to have you at each and every one of those. There's lots of options. I know some of y'all got to make it uh, lunch in the afternoon. So uh, find a service that fits for your schedule for all your families coming over eating lunch. So Lots of options there for you, and we would love to have you at each and every one of them. Um, speaking of Easter as well, today is the last day for our Easter lilies and hydrangeas order. So get those orders in today. The order form is in the narthex. If you, have, if you need to grab one, um, we need those in by today. So make sure you grab those to have those uh, for Easter Sunday. And then trying to look ahead a little bit of things that are coming down the road. Um, our Spring Lawrenceville Assistance Project is uh, almost here. So that's gonna be April uh, 19th through the 20th. So for those of you who don't know, uh, Lawrenceville Assistance Project is an opportunity where we take a few days in the spring and in the fall to go and um, do assistance projects in the community for those who are in need. And so it's a great time to really love on our community well, show them that we're there. 
and uh, we have a variety of projects for any age. So it doesn't matter, you can serve together as a family with your young ones, or even those of us who are older, there are opportunities um, as well. So um, please, uh, the, if you scan that QR code on the back, you'll see a, a button that says, that says LAP, that stands for Lawrenceville Assistance Project. You can touch that and then start that sign up today. And so really just a great opportunity for, uh, for us to love on the city of Lawrenceville. Um, and if you happen to notice, we have here our cradle cross up at the front, which means I get to announce a new baby that was born into the LB family, LB First family. So we have Maverick Kane Hill, who was born. Um, look at that. Look how little he is. He's so little. That's like a newborn picture. So he was born on March 12th. Uh, parents, uh, Mark and Tess Hill. Grandparents, Rip and Cindy Collins. And so... Uh, mom, baby, everybody's doing great, but we just uh, want to celebrate with them, and we're so thankful to have a new family member to add to the LB First family. So we had lots of things happen this week, lots of things that we're celebrating, so we're going to check out what some of those were uh, this week at LB First. stand with me for our call to worship. The words are in the bulletin as well as on the screen. Behold, your king comes to you. Hosanna in the highest.
remain standing and let's join together in our blessing of the palms. Bless these parade palms, O oh God of celebration. May they remind us of the simple joys of living. May we remember the excitement that comes with following Christ. Bless these protest palms, O oh God of justice. That empire is not a thing of the past. May they make us bold and brave to stand up against injustice. Bless these funeral palms, O oh God of comfort. May they remind us of the road that lies ahead. May they encourage us in time of grief and pain. We give you thanks for the parade, the protest, the processional. God, our steps through this holiest of weeks as we cry out together, Hosanna, 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 Amen. may be seated, and as you're seated, I'm going to invite Naomi, Naomi Naz and her family to join us up here as we celebrate today the sacrament of baptism in a unique and special way. I'm excited to have Naomi making a commitment to Christ and to this church. You guys all come on, come on, come on. We'll get the whole crew up here. Everybody, everybody, come on, come on. You, if you guys want to fill in around this side, and Naomi, if you'll just come stand right here with me. You guys will fill in around this way. Keep, keep coming, keep coming. There you go, there you go. All right. Nomi, I'm going to ask on behalf of the whole church, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in His grace, and promise to serve him as your Lord in union with the church, which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races. Awesome. And so let us pray together. Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit to bless this gift of water, and she who receives it, to wash away her sin and clothe her in righteousness throughout her life, that dying and being raised with Christ, she may share in Christ's final victory. Amen. I mean, we're going to have you step in here. All right, and if you'll have a seat. Yeah, just go ahead and have a seat, and we'll, we'll, we'll dunk you back. Don't, don't go all the way down yet. Don't go all the way down yet. Hold on. Just, just sit down. Just sit down. Sit. There we go. All right. If you'll hold your nose with one hand. There you go, and hold your wrist with your, with your other, like this, and we're going to go back, okay? Nomi Naz, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the yes. Holy Spirit. Uh. Welcome to the family. I mean, this is an incredible decision and an incredible part that we get to be a part of. As a church, we're committing to walk with you each and every day, to welcome you to this family of faith and to be a part of your growth in grace and in Christ-likeness. So thank you. Let's, let's pray together. Pastor, will you pray for us? Thank 
that you put in your time for them. Yes, in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 All right, we're going to have you step out this way. You got your flip flops there. you follow Sarah over here. Good morning. Isn't God good? I just want to stop and say that. He's just, he's so good all the time. My name is Carla Diefendorfer, and I'll ask the ushers to come forward at this time as we prepare to worship God with our tithes and offerings. It's such a pleasure to come together today to worship the Lord. Every time I step on this campus, I feel the presence of God. When I step into this beautiful sanctuary, my soul is uplifted, and I prepare to worship God. Part of that worship is the giving of tithes and offerings. There are many ways to contribute. You can do online through the church, church website or through the church app. You can give in person by placing it in the offering plate or in the box in the narthex, or through automatic bill pay with your bank. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you today thanking you for all the blessings you've given us. We continue, you continue to bless us beyond measure every day, Lord. Father, we come to you asking that you bless these tithes and offerings that are given today be used for your mission here at LV First. Lord, may we be generous with the portion of what you have given us. As we give joyfully, we ask that you multiply our gifts to your glory. These things we ask in your name. Amen.
join and sing together hymn number 277, Tell Me the Stories of Jesus. Jeff Lewis, and I'm one of the pastors here, the mission pastor. I'm glad you're here. Let us pray. You know, <clears throat> uh, there's uh, only person who dares to come to King at 3 a.m. in the morning and ask for a, a glass of water is a child. As we pray this morning, let us have that kind of childlike faith. Let us pray. Father, we read these words, he who comes for me I will in no way cast out. No one can pluck them from my hand. I will never, no, never leave or forsake you. And on this week, as we enter Jerusalem, these words are loud and clear. Father, you chose us. You brought peace. You brought shalom. You love to the end. We love till about Tuesday. The blind when you healed the two blind men as, they came, as you came into Jerusalem, called you the son of David, the long-awaited Savior. And for this time in your ministry, you finally said yes, because it was the time. And the world was changed after this week in Jerusalem. Father, calm us today. Allow us to be, understand this week. Meet us in our greatest needs. Father, we pray for those in our family that are hurting. We pray for those community that are ready to give up. Father, we pray for our brothers and sisters and people all over the world in the Middle East and Ukraine. Father, we pray for those in Port-au-Prince who uh, will greet one another this week as they cross each other with these words, la madre de meaning the love of God is falling. The love of God is folly, Father. It's giant. The love of God is ridiculous. The love of God is forever. And it's this folly that you love us in season and out. And so you call us by name. And Father, we pray as you taught us to pray with our brothers and sisters all over the world. Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy earth come, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Well, good morning. And what a good morning it has been already. Thank you for being in worship with us this morning. My name is Adam Hildebrand. I get to be one of the pastors here. It's such a joy to be celebrating with you on this Palm Sunday. Uh, you know, we've done a little bit of everything this morning, right? We had our kids leading us in worship. We've had a baptism. And, and uh, for those of you who grew up Methodist, like the amount of water is not important, all right? All, all you recovering Baptists, you were like, yes, they finally did it right. But, but you know, whether, whether we do it the old-fashioned Methodist way and we dry clean or we go full press, it, it, either way, the baptism is the God's work, not our work. And so grateful to celebrate that today in Nomi's life and in the life of this church. Uh, lots of baptisms happening in, in lots of different places on Thursday night. Uh, I don't know if you know this, but you helped to, uh, people from this church helped to make a dinner church happen, a, a dinner gathering uh, at the Southeast Gwinnett Co-op. And one of our third graders uh, has been helping out with that over the last year and wanted to be baptized on Thursday night. So we had the chance to do that as well. So just incredible things happening in all of the work that you're doing. Uh, so thank you. If you're new with us this morning, let me say welcome. Uh, we're so glad that you're here. Uh, each week we gather together and worship God and celebrate God's goodness in this place with incredible music like you just heard. Thank you to the choir. Uh, we have incredible folks who who are artistic and are able to create banners that bring us to this place. We have people who just give out of their generosity. These coats will go to people in need in our community, and it's just incredible to see what God is doing in this place. So if you are new here, we'd love to share with you a little bit about what we're up to, to hear a little bit of your story, and to share some of ours. As here at Lawrenceville First, we continue to put Lawrenceville First in lots of different ways as we continue to connect the church to the community and the community to the church. And you saw that yesterday, uh, for those of you who were able to make it out to our Easter festival, uh, you know, like Sarah was saying earlier, it was just incredible to see our whole community come together at Lawrenceville Elementary School. And I'm sure you saw some of the pictures uh, and, and just what a, a great crowd it was. But I want to say thank you to the folks who, who made that happen. Um, if you were volunteering yesterday, if you helped out with setup uh, during the event or, or tear down, would you just throw your hand up real quick? And let's just say thank you to these folks who gave their time. <laughs> Normally I'd ask you to stand up, but I know your feet are tired because my feet are tired. And it was, a, it was a great time together, but man, I was beat when I got home. And so uh, what a wonderful thing. And then uh, last week I asked you all uh, at the last minute to bring in some pasta and sauce for nothing but the truth and, and you know, like 150 boxes and, and, and cans of, of sauce, so about 300 items came in uh, in two days. So thank you for your generosity. Thank you for believing in that idea that we as a church are invited to connect the church to the community. And it's just so cool to see how God is using that and making that happen. And, and I, wanna thank you, I want you to think about this week that we're heading into as we prepare for Easter next Sunday. Uh, Thursday night is going to be incredible, uh, just the time together here for Monday Thursday service. If you haven't been a part of that before, I'd encourage you to come and be a part of that, 7 o'clock right here in this space. Our musicians have been doing a great job preparing for that uh, service, but there are so many pieces to that service that you just have to experience, and so I would encourage you to do that, and then invite someone to be a part of our Easter celebration next Sunday, uh, whatever service they're a part of, whatever service you're a part of, just invite them to come and sit with you. And I'm going to ask, I, I kind of previewed this last week when I said about you might have to move your seat. If you could, just kind of like squish into the middle next week so that we can make some room on the outside for all of our new friends who, uh, who will want to sit on the outside. Everybody wants to sit on the outside, okay? Everybody knows the aisle seats are the best seats. You got to pay for, more for them on the plane. So just, if, if you would, scooch to the middle and... I'll, I'll bribe you somehow, you know, we'll figure it out, we'll figure it out, bribery will get you everywhere, right? Well, here on Palm Sunday, we're excited to celebrate this day together, this day that moves us into Holy Week, that moves us closer, the death and resurrection that brings us to new life. And so today, we hear the words of Mark chapter 11, verses 1 through 11, that invite us into this experience, into this holy day. Let me invite you to stand as you're able out of reverence for the gospel. And hear these words from Mark. When they were approaching Jerusalem at Bethpage and Bethany, near the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples and said to them, go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. 
untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, why are you doing this? Just say this, the Lord needs it and will send it back immediately. They went away and found a colt tied near a door outside in the street. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, what are you doing untying that colt? They told them what Jesus had said, and they allowed them to take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. And many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. And then he entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything, as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. And as you're seated, let me invite you to pray with me this morning. Gracious God, as we open your word today, we pray that you would open our hearts, that we might follow you more fully, that we might be your people called according to your word. God, we thank you for this special day. Let us celebrate well. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, over the last uh, many weeks, we've been talking about this idea of comfort creep. This idea that, that comfort kind of moves into our lives and can sometimes pull us off course, can sometimes invite us into a way of living that doesn't stretch us, that doesn't move us closer to the person that God longs for us to be, that sometimes embracing discomfort actually allows us to stretch and grow more into the person that God longs for us to be. That the season of Lent is a season that invites us to purposefully embrace discomfort, which we don't normally do, for the purpose of growing in our faith. We know this, that if we want to grow in anything, if we want to do anything difficult, it's going to involve some discomfort. If we want to get fit, if we want to Uh, If we want to read a book, if we want to take a class, if we want to get another degree, whatever it is we want to do, if it's out there in front of us, it's going to involve some discomfort. And so throughout this season, we've been inviting you to embrace a little bit of discomfort along the way so we might learn more of who God's calling us to be. Today, I want to spend a few minutes just talking about uh, something that I struggle with and I imagine many of us struggle with. I have a difficult time following directions. I'm sure that that's not surprising to those of you who know me well. Uh, When I was in school, when I was older, now that I'm married, I have a difficult time following directions. Uh, If you give me like one of those pieces of furniture in the box, the first thing to go out of the way is what? The instructions. Yeah, let's get rid of those. I'm smart enough to figure this out on my own. I don't need the little Ikea guys telling me what to do uh, as I put together this Ikea bookshelf. I'll figure it out. I'm smart enough to do this. And at the end, when I have parts left over, I just assume that they're extras and that the bookshelf will probably hold. It's not just that in life. Uh, Oftentimes, when I leave here in the afternoons or early evenings and I'm heading home, I'll I'll call my wife, Michelle, and I'll say, hey, do I need to pick anything up from the store on the way home? Do you need anything? And she'll oftentimes say, yes, would you pick up? And she'll start to give me a list, and I'll say, whoa, 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 whoa. You know you have to text this to me because I'm not going to remember. And so she'll text me a list of the things that she needs, just a couple items generally, and, and she goes the extra mile because she's amazing, And she tells me exactly where they are in the store. (laughs) Because otherwise, I will wander aimlessly. And so there I am between the frozen pizzas and the ice cream, following her directions and looking at the thing that she wanted me to buy. Because she gave me the exact name of the thing that she wanted me to buy. She even described the box for me. But as I look right above that box, I see another box. And it's 10 cents cheaper. And so I go home with that box. But not only do I go home with that box, beyond the list of three things that she sent me, as I'm walking out, I see in the bakery that there are cherry pies. And we need a cherry pie. I don't know why, but we need a cherry pie. And if we're gonna have cherry pie, 
we probably need ice cream. So back to the ice cream aisle I go. And if we're gonna have cherry pie and ice cream, we all absolutely need whipped cream. And so, so I end up leaving the store not with the three things that I was instructed to get, but three things that are kinda like the things that I was instructed to get, and about 10 extra things that I was not instructed to get at all. And it's, I, I, I've, I've spent some time reflecting on this recently. Like, why is it that I do things like that? Why is it that I don't want to be told what to do? I think all of us wrestle with this a little bit. We don't like being told what to do. So the point is this. First, if, if you would, just pray for my wife, right? She, she needs that in life. But, but, but really, we have a difficult time doing what it is that we're supposed to do when we're supposed to do it. And it's not that I'm not able. I, I, there's just something deep inside of us that we just don't want to. We just don't like to. And generally, the idea of doing what someone tells me to do makes me uncomfortable. We really prefer when we're in control, when we get to make the rules, when we get to decide what it is we do, when we do it. But what's most interesting about this is oftentimes... The things that I do outside of what I'm instructed to do are generally not good for me. Like, I didn't really need that cherry pie. Michelle had, had planned a dinner that was healthy and wholesome, and now all of a sudden I got cherry pie and ice cream and whipped cream and, and the whole bit. Like, I go above and beyond when I'm not supposed to. It's almost like this problem that we've been dealing with over and over and over in all of humanity. We hear about it in Genesis, the very beginning of the scriptures. There, Adam and Eve are in the garden, and God gives them one thing to do, right? Don't eat from that tree right over there. And like so many of us, it's the thing that they run to. Often the things that I want to, or I want what I decide to do is not the best thing for me or for the people around me. The Apostle Paul talks about this in the book of Romans in chapter 7. He says, I, I, I don't understand my own actions. I don't do what I want to do, but I do the very thing that I don't want to do. And for so many of us, that's our story. Because I want to do the right thing, but that would involve someone else speaking into my life. That would involve this very uncomfortable word for a lot of us, obedience. Now, when I say obedience, all of us as adults, we're like, oh, we bristle at that. Because we think the person that should be obedience is our kids, right? I, I, I use the word obedience most often with my kids, not with adults. We don't think about obedience as an important thing for us to do. We think about it as an important thing for our kids to do. So much so that like, we have this phrase that I use in our house all the time, and I use it so often that my youngest son will like, cover his ears and say, I hate that phrase, I hate that phrase. But we'll ask him to do something, and he'll move very slowly in that direction. And so we say all the time in our house, slow obedience is disobedience. And he hates that. He hates it. I hate having to say it. it Sound like a broken record. But maybe it's what I need to hear as well. Because the story of Palm Sunday involves an act of obedience. It involves multiple acts of obedience, really. As Jesus enters into Jerusalem in a triumphant way, I mean, the party doesn't start until Jesus gets there. I will never not show this graphic because it combines two fantastic things, you know, Palm Sunday and Kesha lyrics, which are just <laughs> great for everybody. You guys can look up who Kesha is later, it's fine. <laughs> but Je this story starts in the most unusual way. Jesus asked a couple of his disciples to do something unique. He says, hey guys, I need you to go into the town ahead of us, and I need you to find the donkey and bring it back to me. Essentially, Jesus tells his disciples, I need you to go steal a donkey for me. Right? Grand theft donkey taking place. 
Jesus says to his disciples, go and, and take it. And then, and then it gets even worse. He says to them, now if anybody asks about it, you just do this Jedi mind trick thing where you're like, the Lord needs it. <laughs> and the disciples go and do it. They're obedient to what Jesus has asked them to do. And for me, it just confounds me. Like the idea that you would go and do this is amazing. It's incredible. The idea that these disciples went off and did what they were asked to do is incredible because if, if I said to all of you, hey, after service today, I need you to go down to Cosmos and pick up a pizza off a table and just say, Adam needs it. <laughs> you would say, I'm not going to do that. Even, even, like, if we went one, if, like, if we went further with this, if we were like, no, 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 the Lord, Jesus needs this pizza. Like, you wouldn't just go and take somebody's pizza. So what makes these disciples think that this is a good idea? I think it's the fact that they consistently followed Jesus in small steps of obedience to the point that they were willing to take this big leap of obedience. Isn't that our story? Isn't that the way that we encounter Jesus, that we follow Jesus? It's just small steps of obedience over time. It's doing what Jesus asks us to do and realizing that when we do what Jesus asks us to do, our lives actually get better, that we actually sense more grace, that we actually sense God's moving in a unique way in each of our lives. And it's just these small steps of obedience. These disciples over the last years have been following Jesus and Jesus has been asking them to do small things along the way and those things have had a compounding factor in their lives to the point that they, right here on Palm Sunday, Jesus goes, go get a donkey. And they're like, okay. And they go and they do it. They do, do exactly what Jesus invites them to do. Their act of obedience is incredible. This is what it means to be a disciple, though, to follow Jesus and to learn the way of Jesus by learning to be like Jesus and doing what Jesus does and says. The positive momentum that comes out of following Jesus and trusting Jesus and seeing Jesus is good at his word has the power and potential to change our lives. It's like what Eugene Peterson, the author of The Message, says in one of his books, he says, we live in what one writer calls the age of sensation. It's a good way to describe it, isn't it? We think that if we don't feel something, there can be no authenticity in doing it. But the wisdom of God says something different, that we act ourselves into a new way of feeling much quicker than we can feel ourselves into a new way of acting. In other words, I don't feel like being obedient but it's those acts of obedience over time that make me feel doing what God wants me to do and sense God's presence. So small acts of obedience for us, it's showing up with coats that we can give away, it's volunteering a Saturday afternoon. Those things are what untying a cult in our lives look like and people might wonder, why are you doing that? Well, because the Lord needs it. Because God can take our acts of obedience and do something amazing with it. Great moves of God are usually preceded by simple acts of obedience. God takes those little things that we do and makes so much more out of them over time. God takes our little amount of, of volunteerism, our, our, our couple of hours on a Saturday and shares the great news of Easter with 1,800 people in our community. God takes those little things that we're willing to do and makes them something amazing. The second thing I think that these disciples, the reason these disciples are willing to go do it is because Jesus was smart enough not to ask them to do it on their own. Because, you know, you go and do something on your own, you, you'll find a way to talk yourself out of it. We don't really like embracing that discomfort, and so if we have to do that on our own, we'll generally talk ourselves out of it. 
But if we go with somebody else, that sense of accountability, which is another word that we don't really like, it makes us uncomfortable, accountability and obedience go hand in hand. Doing what we're supposed to do is so much easier when we're doing it with someone. This is why groups are so important to us here. Whether you're in a small group or a, a men's group or a women's group or a Sunday school class, whatever kind of group you're in, these are important because they help us to take those small steps of obedience, to continue growing and knowing who God is and what God is doing in our lives so that we can follow more fully into that. The truth is we don't celebrate Palm Sunday without these two disciples obeying Jesus' words, doing what Jesus asks them to do. These two disciples that don't even get names in Mark's gospel. Go and do. And I'm sure it was difficult, and I'm sure they, they were worried. It's like what Michael Easter says in The Comfort Crisis. He says that nothing great in life comes without, with complete assurance of success. We're not sure how this is going to turn out, but we're willing to take that step of obedience because we trust that God is good and God is with us and Jesus is asking us to do what leads to life in the fullest. Obedience is where the rubber meets the road for most of us in our faith journey. And there are very few words that make us more uncomfortable than the word obedience because we want what we want and we want Jesus to help us get what we want. Right? That's the way this story goes. These guys go and get this donkey. They bring it back. They put coats on top. Jesus starts to ride in Jerusalem on this donkey. And it's not the way that we would expect it. It's not exactly the way that we would write the story. A conquering king doesn't ride into Jerusalem on a donkey that looks like this, right? That's, that's not the way a conquering king comes in. A conquering king comes in like this painting of Alexander the Great as he entered in Jerusalem on a great war horse, gold, people shouting his name. But Jesus' act of obedience to ride in as people shouted, Hosanna, which by the way is a command. Hosanna, save us now not a question. They're asking something of Jesus. Jesus, save us now. But what's interesting is, I think that they're asking Jesus to do what they want him to do. They're asking Jesus essentially to be obedient to them. Jesus, save us from those Romans. Save us from them. Don't we like that? We like save us from them, whoever our them is. Hosanna, Jesus, save us from them. But Jesus comes with a different understanding of Hosanna. Jesus needs to save us from us. That's what Jesus rides into Jerusalem to do, to save us from us, to save us from our own self-centeredness, to save us from our own desire to have control, to save us from our need to manipulate, to save us from us. Jesus comes in in the most humble way, on a donkey, headed for the cross to save us from us, to save us from our brokenness, our inability to save ourselves, even though we think that we can, to save us from our pride and our self-centeredness, that part of us that just won't fall in line. And Jesus invites us to follow him on his way and to learn to live in the love and the way of Jesus. Jesus that what we find is what C.S. Lewis tells us, that obedience is the road to freedom. That following Jesus and being obedient to what Jesus asks us to do is really the road to freedom. A life lived to the fullest is a life lived in obedience to Jesus, doing what Jesus asks us to do day in and day out. Jesus invites us to follow him, this long obedience in the same direction as Eugene Peterson describes it. To continue being obedient each and every day 
And Jesus demonstrates what this truly looks like as he rides into Jerusalem on a donkey and the crowds chant his name. And those same crowds a few days later, when he doesn't do what they want him to do, when, they, when he isn't obedient to them, they're all of a sudden chanting, crucify him. Crucify him. Before that happens, Jesus does something amazing that I think might invite us and engage us and allow us to live more obedient and therefore to live more in freedom. He goes to a garden and he prays. The night before his death, he goes to the Garden of Gethsemane to be obedient to God, undoing the disobedience of Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden so that we can live in obedience. And it's there in that garden that Jesus prays this prayer that makes us so uncomfortable. Jesus says to God, not my will but yours. Or as Mark states it, not what I want, but what you want. Jesus' obedience there in the garden leads to our salvation, our redemption, and our hope of resurrection. When we said save us now, we didn't know what it would involve. We need God to save us from us. Because the truth is, I want to want what God wants more than what I want. I just struggle to do that. And I think all of us want to want what God wants more than what we want. And this simple prayer, prayed regularly, might help us to be the kind of people that live into the way that God wants us to live. It might untie our lives from the very things that keep us from doing what Jesus asks us to do. This simple prayer, not what I want, but what you want, God, might change our lives. And it might mean that we have to lay down a little bit more than a coat or a palm branch. We might have to lay down our sense of control, our sense of pride. This notion in our minds that somehow we can do enough to save ourselves but to remember that Hosanna is an invitation for Jesus to save us from us. So what's one step of obedience that Jesus might be calling you to today? Maybe it's to pray this prayer and to truly mean it. Not what I want, but what you want, Lord. Not what I want, but what you want. This idea might change our lives. Will you pray with me? Gracious God, as we enter into this holy week, we do proclaim with people throughout the ages, Hosanna, save us from us. So that we might boldly pray this prayer, Jesus. We want what you want. Not what I want, Jesus, but what you want in my life. Not what I want, but what you want in this church. Not what I want, but what you want in this community. Not what I want, but what you want in this world. God, may our small acts of obedience through that prayer lead to a life lived to the fullest, a life lived in the freedom of your grace and your hope. God, not what I want, but what you want. We pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. As we prepare to sing our hymn of invitation, I want to invite you to do a couple of things. Maybe, maybe there's something that you feel like is holding you back from being obedient to Jesus. I want to invite you to come to the altar and pray and just pray that prayer this morning. But I also want to invite you to come and to be in prayer for everyone who might receive these coats, to come and to pray for these coats that the people who encounter them might encounter the love of Jesus in a unique way, that they might hear the good news of Jesus 
through the simple act of giving a coat. If there are those of you who would like to join with our congregational family, I'll invite you to come forward as we stand to sing together our hymn of invitation, number 280, All Glory, Loud, and Honor. got to get everything in today. So we're going to invite some people to join with our congregational family this morning. This is Dan and Marsha Fowler who come to join with our congregational family. And so I'll ask you, will you be faithful to this church through your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness? Yes. Absolutely. Why don't you guys welcome them into the life of this congregation? And I'm going to ask them to hang out down front here, and you can come by and greet them, welcome them, tell them about all the amazing things that you're already involved in and how many things you want them to come and be a part of with you, because that's how we walk, is together. That's how we're obedient to Jesus, is together. That's how we grow in grace, is together. So may we go from this place trusting in God that he sent his son to save us from us, that the simple prayer, not, my, not what I want, but what you want, God, might change our lives. May we go from this place in that hope. Amen? Amen. Amen. 